Hello and welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop Cardboard Coat Check. Right now we have a big package that showed up courtesy of my friend Mike Murphy. He dropped it off here. We got a coat check for this bad boy right here. This huge, I want to say a bad word, I'm not going to say it. Big box from Cool Mini or Not that supposedly contains Zombicide Invader hot off Kickstarter. Uh, this isn't one I bought, so this was um, donated for the stream by... My friend Mike Murphy, who bought this on Kickstarter, I don't even want to know how much he spent. He got, I think, the soldier level it was called, which includes all the minis. So we're going to take a look at what's in this box. So I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge. Normally I answer your gaming and game night questions and strive to make everyone's gaming experience better. Tonight, the question we're answering is what's in this big boy. So we are going to open this up. Um, before I get to that, though, just be sure to check out our website at tabletopbellhop.com where you can find all kinds of gaming content, including news, reviews, uh, lists of podcasts I've found, list of other gaming streamers and other cool stuff. Just head over there before you go. And also, before you leave, make sure you hit the subscribe or follow button, depending on where you're watching. Now, I don't want to kill too much time on this because it's going to take a little while to get through this box. So we are going to open this up. I have no idea how much this weighs, but I'm pretty sure... That if I was in a workplace, I would have had to get someone to help me with that. All right, so we are starting off. We're going to just show off the boxes, and I'll be opening all these. So we're starting off with Zombicide Soldiers Extras. So this is the Soldier Extras. We've got Dark Side Extras. You know you're looking at Kickstarter exclusives when you're looking at cardboard boxes. Then we've got the Invader Tile Set. I'll try to not get too much glare here. Is this all going to fit on the table here? Then we have the civilian extras. Okay, these are in the wrong order for second. Then we have the game. Oh, I can't quite get that yet, so we'll get that in a minute. So then we have the Kabuki Gang Survivor Pack. Mike wasn't kidding when he said there's a lot in this box. And we've got the Plague Gang Survivor Pack. All these Zombicide games like give you lots of heroes to pick from. And we've got the Orphans Gang Survivor Pack. So one of the things we'll try to do is when we put this on YouTube, then we have the big box. So I will note ahead of time, Mike got impatient, bad Mike. And he opened this and cracked the shrink on it and took the rule book out. But other than that, he hasn't touched it. So this is my first time seeing it, what's in here. But he did cheat and open up this to grab the instruction book, which I hope he put back in there. This is the big box. We're going to open that first once we get all this stuff out of the box because there's still more in here. Holy cow. Then we have Zombicide Black Ops, which is obviously one of the big box expansions. And we're digging deep here. Zombicide, Dark Side. Does that not look like an homage to the old Warhammer 40k cover? All right, I think that's all that's in here. I don't see anything else. I just see foam. Just double check. Yeah, yeah. there we go. All right, let's get this box open. All right, we are gonna start with the bottom one. Zombicide Invader. All right. We are on the core box for Zombicide Invader. I'm going to have to figure out where to put stuff as I open it. We're going to go with the floor, I think. They're on top here. This will work. I can put it in the lid. All right. So that's what we see when we start. We got, I have no idea what that is. Probably going to say that a lot. So if you haven't figured this out yet, this is basically Zombicide's answer to Space Hulk or Zombicide's answer to aliens or any other. Lots of Space Marines fighting. Okay, I don't know what that is. Some kind of weird void thing. And there's a bunch of them. They're all the same. So a pile of whatever these are. Oh, they're different on this side. So there's that side where it's kind of wispy and then that side where it's kind of gross. I'm going to guess portals the aliens come through. No clue. We're just going to pile that up here. We're going to take it. Wow. Okay. Talk about thick rule book. Space Crusaders. Yes, it does remind me of that. Or Advanced Space Crusade. 
Uh, we are looking at 55 pages. There is an index. You know it's a, a, a heavier game when it's got an index, or at least complex game. I don't know if this would be considered heavy. Cool Mini usually makes rather nice rule books. Uh, we got Table of Contents. I'm going to try to hold this up in a way you can kind of see as I flip through. Lots of text. Small text, but at least it's black on white. Thank you. Got some nice art. I'm going to take a quick look at this. Yeah, set aside the equipment card. Choose a mission. Place the tiles. Place the objectives. Uh, Zombicide through space and time. Interesting. It's talking about the other ones. There's three different seasons. Went through the dark years. That's just advertising other games. I thought it might actually have something where you can combine them all. You probably can in some way. Looks like lots of examples, lots of artwork. That part looks very much like Zombicide, like all the previous games. So it looks like you got the same deal with corridors and rooms. So it looks like it's going to be very similar to the original Zombicide. I'm sure there are differences. Like, that's an awful lot of weapons being shown in examples here. All right, I am not going to bother going through the rest of the book. You get the idea. Lots of art, lots of, lots of graphics. Nice turn-by-turn -turn examples. Clear, showing off the board. Looks good. Um, tuning the difficulty playing with more than seven players. Security rooms. I don't know. That, that's not quite an alien. So at least they made the things look unique. Well, it's an alien, but it's not an alien. Or a gene sealer. So it kind of looks like a hybrid of both. So yes, those are spawn points, as Mike just pointed out. All right. So this isn't quite as bad because it looks like the rules end on page 38 or so because now we have a bunch of missions. That's not quite as bad. I would have thought the missions would be a separate book. Yeah, so a whole bunch of missions. So quite a bit of the back of the book is missions. It looks like there are 10 missions included in this base box. All right, putting that aside. We have Cool Mini or Not's typical. We package everything over difficulty because you can't even get to this. And it's probably going to be its own little box. Yeah, yeah, this is very cool, Mini or not. This is going to be minis. Oh, and other things. Ooh, that's pretty. All right, yeah. I'm trying to decide the best way to show this off. So we have dice. They're D6s. I am not going to bother taking those out of the bags. They're red D6s. We have a stack of equipment cards. Mike's going to hate me because I'm going to open this and it's going to spill everywhere when he takes his game back. But I want to show off some of the cards. Cool Mini is notorious for having what looks like good box inserts. But then once you actually start using this stuff, it doesn't work as well. So there's two different decks here. Orange back and black back. And I'll be right back. Okay, so these cards are very thin. I will note that. And the other thing, you can probably tell by what just happened, they are ridiculously slippery. So whatever they glossed, glossed these with, it is not a linen finish. They're nice looking. The art looks solid. But man, they are slippery. Like I'm just trying to stack them up on the desk and they're falling over. Rather extensive stack of orange equipment cards. Each of these has some type of weapon on it. Note they are glossy finish as well. Prototype assault shotgun. Come on, camera. Will they need card sleeves? That's your call. So Mike is asking if they would need card sleeves. I don't know. Uh, they feel solid enough that I don't think they would. The thing is, they're slippery enough as it is now. It's almost like they're sleeved. So there's a couple funky things in here that were in the deck. Sentry guns their own rules on the back. So those were mixed in with the rest. I don't know what these are, but we have a bunch of O2, oh, oxygen tanks. So there's oxygen tank cards in here. I dig the art. Come on, focus. You can do it. Stop focusing on the 10. Give up on focusing. And then some black weapons and red weapons. So there's all kinds of different weapons at different levels. The art's nice. It's it's uh, sci-fi looking, obviously, but it's not like computer-generated looking. It looks like it's all hand-drawn art. Cattle prods. That sounds useful. And then we got some red things. Prototype weapons. So we got a bunch of prototype weapons. 
So we got four of those. I don't even know. They must make card sleeves in this size, but this is a really odd size. And I almost wish I could show you the way these cards are sliding everywhere down here. Like I'm putting them in piles and they just don't stay. <laughs> They're so slippery. It's ridiculous. All right. So this is one extra activation. Hunter spawn. So these orange cards are something else. Spawn one worker. Worker spawn. Tank spawn. So this is your, your bad guy zombie spawn deck. Except they're not zombies. So that's the orange deck. Creepy looking zombie guys on there. You can do it. Come on. There we go. So that's one extra creepy guy. Spawns. Here's another spawn card. Come on. Seriously, camera. You can do it. There we go. All right. Whole bunch of spawn cards. Some kind of weird spoiler ab abomination. Creepy art. Gross art. We're going to put all these cards back before they spill again. So blue cards are equipment. All kinds of equipment. It's all kinds of stuff in here. Oh, I got some spawn cards mixed in. Yeah. Oh, there's two different blue cards here. All right. Anyway, before these spill again, another example. Heavy shotgun. I dig the art for items at least. And of course, the was Sambo Kumini. That doesn't actually fit back where it said it came from. Oh, uh, we had a bunch of pegs, which you're going to use to track stuff on your player boards. Hold up a minute. Rings to go on the bases of the minis. Always a nice touch. These are the really impressive looking player boards. I got to say, those are nice. Really nice. So you got actual slider up here. You can hear it as it goes in. You got a spark to stand up your cards. I probably put in a card upside down. Yeah, so you got a spot to stand up your cards. You got places to put your equipment and so on. Really nice player boards here. Really impressed by those. There's a whole bunch of them. So one, two, three, four, six in the base game. So six of these player boards, plastic player boards. Then we have these player cards which is going to be the characters from the base game. I can't get over how slippery those little cards are. All right, here's the Baraka character card. You got Cole, who looks very under-armored compared to everyone else, like Jared. So along with these, they show what you're going to get as you level up. So that's what their abilities are as they level up, which matches the top here. So for example, there is one of the characters and once they get up the orange level, you're gonna unlock their orange abilities over here. I know that much from playing the other Zombicide games. So then we got minis, lots and lots of minis. So there are, here's all the characters. I'm not gonna show you all of them, but we have six characters in the base game, whole bunch of characters. Nice spot to put them right here. Then we're going to have the minis for all the characters. It's cool mini or not. The minis look great. As they do, of course. So that's what cool mini does well. So these are the rings for the bases to show your player color. Really simple. Snap on. Nice and easy. Off. Nice and easy. They've been doing this for a lot of games. Not surprised. So here is where we're going to hope my camera gives you some kind of idea. Okay, that guy's badass. Really cool looking. But the white on white of the miniature is just not being picked up by my webcam. And I apologize for that. Let's see. You get a rough idea, but nothing great. Female character, of course, is wearing no armor. Because, you know, why would she want to do that? More badass guys with big guns. The definite Space Marine look going on there. They even have like the giant backpacks. Another less armed character. Another guy with a big backpack and a big gun. Then we got some kind of sentry gun. It's kind of neat looking. 
And then this badass looking thing. Look at this thing. One of the impressive things I like so far is everything is assembled. No glue required. That is fantastic. So then we have the grossness. These are darker colored, so you know, yeah, of course, it's gonna work on those a little bit. You got like Cthulhu tentacles coming out there. It's like Cthulhu meets aliens. So there you go. There are two types of characters. You have soldiers and scientists. So that's why some of the people aren't dressed as well as others. All right, fair enough. It's kind of gross. It's like the lithids meet aliens. And then of course we have much more human looking ones. Which it's driving me nuts. My camera will not focus on anything but me. A lot of different shapes, sculpts here, which is impressive. Then we have the absolutely horrible, looks like something out of Nurgle, Warhammer, Fantasy Battle-ish. There we go. Thank you for focusing on him, at least, for a minute. Lots of extra tentacles. Maybe it's the end of Akira. Then we have another nasty-looking guy with a weird whipping tentacle thingies. All right, so that's only one layer. So under this, we have a ton for, I'm going to say, zombies. So there are two of the big guys. There's, I don't know, it looks like runners. And then you got two different ones with the tentacles coming out. And then one, two, three, four, five different, looks like generic fighter types. So it does have some instructions on how to put this back in the box, which I think is kind of amusing. So we're going to get this out of the way just to show you that quickly. So it does show you how to get this back in. I thought it was kind of funny. So all the minis go there. Then underneath this, we have more. We have the punch boards. Lots and lots of punch boards. And these, I have no idea if this is a component for the game or just part of the box. I have no clue if this is just something in here to support everything. It kind of looks like it. Hold that up. See, like this is a corner protector. I have a feeling that these extra black things have nothing to do with the game. All right, maps are nice. Really clear what rooms are which. There's nine spots on every board. That's a thing for Zombicide. Some nice indoor and outdoor scenes here. I'm just going to throw these right back into the bottom. Nice and clear where the walls are, where the doorways are, where they aren't. I appreciate that. Again, really clear hallways versus rooms. I like it. I don't know if indoors, outdoors matters, but that's also very clear. Wow, there's a lot of map tops. And this is just the base game. We got more boxes to open. All right, I'm going to speed this up. So out of all that, only one sheet are actual punch boards. So you have your exits, your entrances. These are the spawn points for the original game. Um, various other tokens, noise tokens, because the big part of the game is if you make noise, they get to you. So that's it. In the core box, you got, again, those black things on the edges just to try to keep everything solid. So there you go. You do need oxygen to go outside. So that is a big change from the previous one. So now I'm going to rebuild this box. There we go. Now, thank. Unfortunately, they didn't do the smart thing like they did with um, what is it called? Mechs versus minions, where all the minis fit in all the spots. These, unfortunately, have to go exactly where they belong. But there is a picture on the side to show you where that is for everything. All right, we got a rule book. Oh, sorry, we have the pegs. Oh, I didn't even show you the pegs. It's pretty simple. These pegs. Again, I played previous on besides. Just peg into the boards for tracking various things. So, for example, the yellow player puts a yellow peg. You got pegs in all six player colors. Looks good. Looks very similar to previous Zombicide games. Obviously, some new rules. I don't see any major component upgrades. Um, the level up board's actually the same as in previous games. The cards are slippery as heck, though. I don't know what's up with that. Dice are just D6s. Uh, here's a game round summary for how thick the book is. That doesn't look overly complicated. It's one page. We're going to throw that in. 
And then we have the spawn points, which don't have a good spot in the box. We're just going to throw those on top. Oh, actually, those should be going on top, on top. Sorry, we are going to close. And there go the tech cards. See those cards? And where they go in the box? Not good. There's spots for cards that don't hold all the cards. All right, we've now pizza boxed that back together. Now we put the rule book in and the spawn points and the lid and we are good. So Mike, if you want to come by tonight, pick up your core set. It is done. So Zombicide Invader core box unboxed. Now we're going to move on to the rest of the stuff. So again, we're midway through this. Anyone in the chat, feel free to ask questions. I'll answer them as we go. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop. You can find my content at tabletopbellhop.com. I am currently unboxing the ridiculous amount of miniatures in Zombicide Invader Hot Off Kickstarter. Making me jealous because this isn't my game. <laughs> it's one of my friend's games and I thought it'd be cool to show off. So Black Ops says on the back, you are the Black Squad, the best color for covert ops. What? You're the best color. Okay, whatever. We are the Black Squad, the best color for covert ops, and let people know why they better better forget you. You were on a wet job, and emergency calls came from planet PKL-7, the main operating platform, extracting the precious xenon fuel. Aliens there have turned infected, bloodthirsty, and an onslaught is going on. The stakes are high, and we cannot sit idle. The High Command ordered us to protect the Xenium. We decided to protect the people. Perhaps some compromise can be made, or we do both. Yeah, that sounds like a challenge worthy of Black Squad. Ready your weapons, buddy. We're going to war. So yes, we have a whole bunch of new minis. Looks like one, two, three, four, six new characters. Another turret, another thing. We got 27 new equipment cards, six Xeno cards. So they're not zombies, they're Xenos. Uh, some more tokens and six more dashboards. This is an expansion. It is compatible with the Soul Sci-Fi Zombicide range. That's kind of interesting, but it only works with it. Uh, you do need a copy of Zombicide to use this. So we are going to open this up. It's getting there. Cover's gross. All right. So right on top. It's a little thinner than the other box, but still a significant size. Mike, there's no way you're getting this all in the core box. Absolutely no way. We have the rule book. Which is surprisingly thick for an expansion. 19. But there are 10 new missions. So that's double the missions in the base game. So you have 20 missions with these two. Uh, you are looking at 6 pages of new rules. And then the rest of the book being additional missions. So a whole 10 more missions. Doubling your content right there. You got a whole extra squad. Um, there's a whole background here. Tells you what it has. Similar deal as the last one. Rule book looks good. Nice white. Black text on white, thank you. Lots of graphics. Lots of nice artwork. Well, nice is a uh, uh, <laughs> suspect word. Um, that's good. There's some new tiles. There's some new security zones. There's a new Xeno called the Juggernaut. We'll get to see him soon. And 10 more missions. I got to say, that's like doubling your content. That's what every expansion should do. Literally, you're getting twice as many characters, twice as many missions with this. All right, we have some punch boards here and some map tiles. Not nearly as many map there. We're not doubling the number of map tiles. Not even close, actually. So you're not getting as many map tiles, but we do have some of those coming later. So we have new spawn points. It looks like we have a door or a hatch. And more noise tokens. Stuff you're going to find in every Zombicide game. Uh, very different look to these rooms. They're much more colorful, and it looks like reality is warping. There's some... Um, What's that deep thought or whatever, that thing you put it in and it's supposed to make images look like you're on LSD? I think someone used that to generate some of the corners of these rooms here. So we have three new lap tiles. Same deal, two-sided, but wow, things are going funky. There, there's some weird hallucinogenic stuff going on in these rooms. Same deal here. Looks like bad stuff's going on in Black Ops. Three new, very psychedelic, very colorful tiles. Then we get to, of course, a cool mini or not game special. The ridiculous card holder again. 
once I take these out, they're not going to go back in. Oddly, it's part of the cardboard box, but it's not. I don't really understand that packaging choice because at least then the lid would keep them in. Because this is another miniature box that's on its own. Yeah. Oh, even sillier, it's a sleeve. So we have a sleeve to hold all the minis and a weird little opening for the cards. I don't get it. I don't know why. You know what? I'm going to do the cards last this time. Oh, we have minis. And, oh, interesting. So, again, kind of looks like the base set, right? You got another six of these. We have new pegs and shiny new colors. There's some interesting color choices. Uh, we have bases now. So if you always wanted to play lime green, you can now play lime green. And your copy is on the side. Invaders. Then we have minis. We have a little tiny turret. Looks cool. We got a dude who's totally pulling off the 40K look by wearing a trench coat over top of his spaceman armor. Because, you know, that's important. Then we got, like, twisted doctor looking dude. Oh, all these guys have, like, capes and stuff. Actually, this guy's really cool looking. He's got a chain sword. I wonder where they got that idea from. He's got, like, a cool thing hanging over his shoulder. Then we got the BFG guy. Oh, yeah, they're all doing the trench coat thing. So that, that's part of Black Squad. Black Squad wear trench coats over their, their space suits. Yep, uh, we got more trench coats. Hey, trench coats are fun to paint. If you're going to paint this, I got to admit, they are fun to paint. Yeah, this this one's cool looking. That's a badass looking character. All right, one more. Space Marine in a trench coat. Someone's uh, seen the Dark Angel Space Marines before. And then another, whatever these robot things are. It's different than the other one, which is cool. That's a neat bit. And, of course, our new... Batty. Just as gross and disturbing as hell. Look at that tongue. Look at that tongue. Ah. Space Batty Bum. Alright, there's all your new minis. It's impressive. I don't know why there's a sleeve, but it's impressive. We're going to put the sleeve back on. Then we're going to put this back in. Juggernaut Abomination. Ah. I like it. All right, more cards, which should be cards for the new bad guy types. Because what happens in Zombicide is you just draw a card, and that's what you spawn. So every expansion is just going to give you more of those cards. And it's really simple, because you just shuffle the cards in with the rest of them, the rest of your cards, which I always liked that about Zombicide. So we're going to split these into piles. Oh, we have a bad thing going on here. There we go, fixed it. And black cards. Okay. So is it. There's your new bad guy spawning cards. Okay, this is weird because these aren't quite as slippery, but maybe it's just there aren't so many of them. And there's your Juggernaut Abomination. <laughs> yeah, okay, so it makes sense, right? There was only one new mini in here. You got pretty good odds of drawing this guy because all those cards are going in the deck. All right, new Zombicide Immediation. Then you got those Sentry Guns. So that's what these are, the rules for the new Sentry Robot and the Sentry Gun. So again, you get double the guns, double the sentry. So that's something else. O2, whether you have it or not, there's six, one for each character. I'm learning, see? I haven't even read the rules. Then you got equipment. Oh, you got a grenade launcher. You need that one. It's a full auto grenade launcher. Those two words don't normally go together. You got some badassery going on there. Full auto grenade launchers. Nice. <laughs> and a pyre minigun. A minigun that shoots fire. Okay, then. There's taking it to the next level here, I think. And then the black guns, which are, I think, as far as I can tell, is like the basic ones, probably like starter weapons. Um, they even have the Thunder Fist. Okay, the Shock Glove. Sorry, I, the Games Workshop's going to sue me for... No, that's not my fault. I didn't name this stuff. All right, there's your new set of cards. Now, this doesn't double what's in the original, but not bad. Oh yeah, I gotta say I'm actually more impressed with the, the expansion of the contents of the original box. Like the original box is cool, but this is impressive for what you get in here. I dig it. That's a lot of new stuff. Like six new characters, that's crazy. And ten new missions. I said literally doubling the number of characters and missions in the original game. That is nice. So here we go. That was Zombicide Black Ops. What's weird is it doesn't actually say Zombicide Invader Black Ops. So that's kind of an odd choice. 
There it does. It comes with this big guy going back. I didn't put it on. Oh, sorry, Mike. It's sideways compared to the cover. Sue me. All right, next. Ooh, this one's the heaviest. Like, seriously, this is heavier than the core box. Oh, and I see why. Talking about doubling the content. We got seven new characters. And we got a whole slew of new monsters. It's an age of space travel and discoveries. Humanity is ready to reach new frontiers. Thanks to Xenium, a breakthrough fuel allowing spaceships to go further and faster. Something, however, went wrong. PKL-7, the sole extraction point for Xenium, has been invaded. The Xenos, an alien species, have turned mad and attacked everyone on site. They got infected and turned into zombie killing machines. So they're zombie aliens. Like, everything about this game is just taking it to that next step. You're like, you go on aliens? Okay, but we're going to make them zombies. You want a flamethrower? We're going to make it a rapid fire flamethrower. Because I don't quite know how that works yet. Uh, we are the Green Squad. So these are the, the, the green ones instead of the black ones. A unit of elite soldiers trapped in the Xenian mines of PKL-7. The Xeno horde is coming from the deep, eager to reach the surface and destroy everything in its path. We are few but determined to stop them at any cost. It's time for Zombicide Dark Side. Ah, Zombicide Dark Side is a cooperative game for 1-6 to six players ages 13 and up. Played together. This is a standalone game. That is why it's so damn heavy. This is a standalone, completely separate version of Zombicide. Invader. Impressive. Two standalone games and one expansion. That's, yeah, wow. I don't know how you would pick between the two. All right, uh, we are going to slide this over just a bit. And we're going to open that up. So I have to assume this rule book is going to be as thick as the original. So we have the rule book. This looks like the same box as the original, does it not? We have spawn tokens. I'm not going to open these. So we have rubble. And then rubble that's been broken through. I'm not going to bother opening these because I know these will all be identical. Then we have a significantly large rule box that is 55 pages. The exact same page count as the original book. Uh, with the exact same round summary on the back. It's a lot of duplicated information. Um, 55 pages including an index. I am going to guess there are 10 missions in here. I'm psychic that way. Uh, there's a list of some. Yep, yeah, there are 10 missions in here. Though I gotta say, the aliens are a little grosser and a little more red in this one. So seeing as I already went through, but anyone that jumps ahead, we got a list of the components. Rule book solid. Um, there are a lot of components in here. Holy cow, 74 cards. Uh, it does talk about the different sets. This is like basically the exact same thing that comes in the core game. Rule book. Uh, the setup's even the same. The type of cards are the same. I'm sure it's all completely compatible. Rulebook has plenty of artwork, lots of in-game examples. Uh, if it's anything like any of the Zombicide games, very actually good to read. Uh, very clear to read. Uh, it, the examples are, of course, from this version of the game, which is a nice touch. I've seen that before where they duplicate a rulebook and they use tiles from different printings or different sets. Uh, I'm just going to show off one more of these. It's Zombicide. In space. With space marines all right so same deal as last time we got a big box here with its sealed code on it to open up with all the minis and stuff we're going to skip that just because it's easier to, for me to get to this then we have a big batch of map tiles and tokens and those plastic things are definitely just in there to keep everything in place because we get the same thing in this box i'm just impressed that they put out like two copies of the same game that's a that's kind of ballsy to be honest. Makes me wonder if people who didn't back the Kickstarter at the get the heck of get everything level would be interested in buying the same game twice. Because I am sure by buying it on Kickstarter, you probably got a better deal. Alright, typical. I'm amused that like the, the spawn points kind of remind me of Space Invaders. That's kind of cute. So this is it, punch boards. We got doors. That's what these are down here. And then open doors on the other side. Then we got maps. I'm going to flip through these quickly so everyone can see them. Uh, again, I dig the maps, but what we have here, uh, this is interesting. So what this is, is this is Zombicide meets Massive Darkness. Massive Darkness is another game by Cool Mini or Not that uses the same rules, but it has a whole set of rules for darkness. That is what this looks like to me, is Zombicide meets Massive Darkness. So you have lit corridors and dark rooms. 
Same as before, everything's on a nice grid. It's very clear where walls are, very clear to see what's in the rooms, where a miniature's standing. Nine quadrants on each board. There's, I don't see anything that would confuse. Yeah. So this is an underground complex, I'm being told by Mike, with different rules because it's underground. But I swear, I bet you they took the rules right from Massive Darkness, which is their Zombicide dungeon crawl game. And it probably uses all the light rules from that. Okay, there, you don't want this map for so <laughs> Wow. You can have all your guys last stand in the last room there. Everything's nice and clear, easy to see. There's some nice artwork on the rooms. I bet you there's some nice uh, Easter eggs if I actually took the time to look at these. Seems like you wouldn't combine these as easily with the other ones, though, because the other ones have outdoors. So you have outdoors and this is underground. I don't know if the two would actually hook up well, though. This is starting to match the tiles. So maybe there's a couple tiles for actually combining the two. Oh, another big empty room. Not empty, but sorry, big empty space with a room. All right, lots of tiles. On to the minis. Again, I'm going to apologize ahead of time. My camera doesn't like to pick them up. So, hey, the cards are in separate packs this time. That is a nice touch. And for Mike's sake, I am not going to open these, so I'm just going to show these off. So the yellow cards here are the Monster of the Xenos deck, so you're going to draw cards to show what you spawn. And here's an example of a Driller Worker spawn, which we're going to try. Maybe I do have to open this just so you can see it. Oh, it almost focused. You can kind of see that. All right, let's try with this hand. So that's the, the better hand. There we go. You can kind of see that with its different stats. Got six, depending on the level you're on, how many spawn. Two if everyone's green level, or if anyone's green level, if anyone's yellow level, four are going to spawn. If anyone's orange level, six are going to spawn. And if anyone's red level, eight of these guys are going to spawn. And then we have the equipment deck with the prototype assault rifle, which actually I swear there was a prototype assault rifle in the other game. So there might be some overlap on the equipment cards. I'm not going to open all these because they go back in here way nicer. Uh, again, we have red D6s. We've got some more really interesting. Now we're looking in drab player colors. So these are the pegs. They're going to go on the player board. These are the rings. So if you ever wanted to play drab green, you can play drab green now. You have your player boards and your character card that's going to go on it. Again, you're going to peg those pegs here, and then the equipment cards are going to get put into these spots. Uh, this is your slider bar for your level. As you level up, you're going to get movement abilities, which are listed on your character. These have always been nice. It's on beside every version is on beside. I think it's since the, the medieval one has come with these. They're very nice. You got six in here. So again, you're doubling. So what are we up to? That's uh, six from the base game, six from the other expansion, six here. We're up to 18 characters. That's a lot of characters. I'm going to do this one last. So we're going to move this here for now. And we'll just show off the bottom. I'm just going to keep this in here. So here are all your monster types. Lots of bright red monster types. There's actually a thing on the side that tells you what order to put them away in, which is kind of nice. But i got to say, Mechs versus Minions did it better for every mini fit in every slot. That's a lot of red alien dudes. And they're creepy. <laughs> All right, see how well read. No, not at all. All King Zombie Alien. So we have a whole bunch that look like that. Almost all of these look like that. Then we got guys that look like this, which are really creepy with lots of extra arms. There's definitely some Gene Stealer influence there. We got a whole bunch of those. Then you got these guys that are kind of hunched over with big claws. And we got these looking weird long armed guys. There's some salad fingers going on here. Really impressive minis, as always. Cool mini or not, just does impressive minis. And then those, I think, match what's in the up here. Yeah, they're close enough. And then we got the huge ones. Look at that. That's terrible looking. Horrible. And we have a bunch of those in there. And then we have the biggest of them all. I don't even know what this thing's doing. Look at that. Okay. It's like screaming and its tongue's going out into the air. Absolutely horrifying. 
spiky tail. I don't even know. That's just dreadful. Dreadful. All right, heroes. Again, we have a remote tank thing. So now you have three different ones of those if you count all the different sets. You've got a remote sentry gun. Again, it's unique. It's different than the other ones. And you got a bunch of your soldiers and your space outfits and your scientists and their civilianish clothes. Now, most of these look like they're wearing armor. And the camera really has a hard time with the white. It does not want to autofocus. There's your BFG guy. Oh, that's kind of interesting. To be honest here, it's just to show something. They're kind of like soft minis, which is nice because that vent without breaking, like it comes out that way. Lots of detail, huge points for not having to assemble any of these. Because that would be terrible. Like, there's a lot of small details on these minis. Miniatures just keep getting better and better. Like, that was a pose you couldn't even get a few years ago. With the 3D nature of that pose, you just couldn't get a miniature in that shape back in the day. All right, so there we go. So I gotta say, like, in general, like, if I was to own this, I'd probably toss out this box. Like, this is just redundant. It's neat packaging, but... You'd be able to fit way more in the box if you didn't have that. Rule book back on top, spawn points back on top, and we are done. Zombicide. Here, should I try to line it up properly this time? Alright, this way. So, speaking of assembling miniatures, so that was Zombicide Dark Side, a standalone version of Zombicide Invasion. Invasion? Is that right? No, I'm saying the wrong name. Invader. Sorry. Zombicide is right there. I should pay attention. Uh, standalone Zombicide Invader game that I swear is based on Massive Darkness, which is another cool miniature, not miniature game that's similar to Zombicide, but has darkness. So there we have that one. Now, all right, we're going to do these tile set first. It's going to be quick. So next we have the Invader tile set because you obviously need 12 game tiles from Invader and Black Ops. So these are the same tiles that were already in it. So you need to have either Invader or Dark Side. State of the Art Outpost, based on the section of this, contains 12 tiles. As far as I can tell, these are the exact same tiles that already came in Invader. Now I don't have it still open to actually double check to see if they are all identical. Okay, so this is just coming in a sleeve, which is nice. That's a good way to protect it. So we're gonna... I apologize. Sorry, microphone. Oh, it even comes with a punch board. Weird. So yeah, we have a duplicate set of the punch board from Invader, including all the special tokens. And then we have the tile. So we'll go through these quick. As far as I can tell, these are literally identical to the tiles in Invader. Come on, camera. Like you won't focus on that? Maybe Sean is in the chat can confirm that. They're looking similar, but you know what? I've looked, looked through a bunch of these already. These just say 05, 05R. 05V. The thing is, if they're not the ones, there's no scenario book in here to tell you how to set these up. So it does seem odd to even sell these as a separate set then. I guess for fan scenarios? And this is again that that right there, that hallway is the transition tile, I swear, for the other one. And here we have some of the funky stuff that was going on. Remember, I was like, hey, look, at psychedelic. Well, here's those psychedelic tiles. And there's the psychedelic tiles again. Interesting. So a full set extra tiles for some reason. 
I'm not sure why you would need extra tiles, to be honest, but I haven't read the rules. I'm going to guess for fan made scenarios. It might make it easier to find things if you're going to set up your own thing. So, okay, so the game had objective cards that let you make your own maps. So here's more tiles to make your own maps. And this came back here for you. So, short and simple, that was the Invader tile set for Zombicide Invader, which contains all 12 double sided boards and one token punch board, requires one of the two core games. And as far as I can tell, it is just more of the same tiles. 12 themed tiles. It even says from Invader in Black Ops there. So I have to assume these are just extra tiles for the game. All right, let's go to small boxes. So we have the Orphans Gang Survivor Pack. What I'm expecting in here is six new characters and six character cards. And that is exactly what we got. Six new characters and six character cards. So we have, I don't know if you want to see the skills or not. We have the wizard. Oh, wait. Glare, glare, glare. There we go. The wizard. We have Jenny. We have Ink. We have Goliath. We have Clops. We have Baby. And then the Orphan Gang actually has their own set of rules. So that's pretty cool. And on the back, we have the rules for the Orphan Gang. And let's see if maybe it'll focus on that. There we go. We can kind of see those. I am not going to be able to show you the backs well without spilling. There we go. We can see the backs. These are neat minis. These are actually neater than the ones in the base game. I got to say, this guy is fantastic looking. Okay, again, I'm not going to be able to get the focus. Oh, there we go. You can actually kind of see that. Really cool looking. Neat looking gang, I got to say. Very cool. I'm not going to hold up everyone. This is just not working that well. So it looks cool. So you have six characters. I assume you probably would play the entire gang instead of mixing and matching them with other sets. Uh, these are probably, Mike was pointing out, these are Kickstarter exclusives. I'm going to assume so. With this style of box, that's going to be a Kickstarter exclusive. So that is the Orphan Gang. Start off with this. So Sean has something to cut to, or he can figure out the timestamp. Plague Gang. Wow, that's a big gun. Interestingly, there's only five people in this gang. So there might be different gangs, which are better for different uh, different player counts. There is no, just a heads up, there is no way for anyone opening this, you need an exacto. There is no, no like tab to pull on or anything. I'm trying to be as careful as I can to open these as it is. And it's not proving to be easy. And that's using a hobby knife. All right, got it. So we have Sydney. Not she straight. It's working pretty good. Pat, who has a plague mask. Interesting choice. McIntyre. Finn. And Carmen. And again, play gang rules. So specific rules just for this gang. And again, this seemed to work pretty good. You gotta check out the big gun on this guy. Alright, let's hold those up and hopefully. Come on. Did it worked last time. Oh, there goes some water. Let's put that in back. <laughs> there we go. 
So those are the five minis. I really like this one here. That's a neat looking mini. And then I'll try to show you the backs. Not like that. Again, everything pre-assembled. That's a nice bonus. Nights the night I drop everything on the floor at least once. Where'd the other one go? Where'd the other one go? All right. Ah, in the box. Nice. All right, there we go. Put that back. Let's see if I can get the back without me tipping it out this time. Backs of the minis as best I can show them here on camera. There we go. Thank you for focusing camera. Then we'll do the fronts again. Try to get that in one more time. So there we go. That is the Plague Gang box. One more. The Kabuki Gang pack. I expect something Asian theme. Gonna have some samurai, geisha. So same deal, we got six characters in this one. Exactly what I expected them to look. Wow, these would be awesome cyberpunk miniatures. They forget, not that we cyberpunk requires miniatures normally, but they would be awesome cyberpunk miniatures. I'm gonna pick up this gang just so I can have the minis. All right, I have to produce, pronounce Japanese names. So gang rules, same deal. And yeah, they're very unique, very Japanese inspired. So we have Ayuman. They all look like Oni, pretty cool. Oh, I should be showing you the stat side. So I don't know, maybe the other side would be cool. Easier to see. We have Neoski. I don't know. Neosuki. I am not good at Japanese names. Oiwa. Salmon. Not salmon. Salmon. Taketsu. This is the coolest of the bunch. And Yomo Shichi. Who is dressed as a clown. And some really badass looking miniatures. Like, you want some Shadowrun Street Samurai, some Cyberpunk minis. These are really nice looking. Best of the bunch so far. You can do it, camera. Focus on the gray stuff. No? And the back. Sure, focus on the back. Thanks. Try the front one more time. So six more characters. Another gang. We have the Kabuki gang for Zombicide Invader. Soldier Extras. Wow, oh, focus on that. It likes words, obviously. Whoa, creepy. Creepy little things. What the heck? I don't like those. Those are really ugly. Creepy little thing. So, we have lots of stuff here. So, we have character cards and monster cards. So, this comes with both. We have the Soldier Pack Rules and New Abominations. We have the Brood Mother and Brood Children in this pack. So, we, it looks like we have four new characters. And I am not going to bother, but there's also a monster deck. So it'll be the different cards for the various monsters that come in here. But we will show off Dr. Fisher. Frank, who it looks like is one of the aliens. I, I don't know why there's Frank and why he's one of the aliens. And these cards are shiny. There we go, Frank. It's one of the red aliens from the Dark expansion. Then we have Kilgore. And Massimo. Man, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Okay, I don't know if this came this way. I don't know if it's one you actually have to glue or it won't fit in. But it goes on a base there. And man, that's a nasty looking thing. 
Like, I don't even know. It has no face. Unless maybe that's the face. Creepy. So this one, the base was not on it for whatever reason. Uh, and then a really big hulking brute of an alien. The aliens tend to, there we go. It likes the gray. And that's horrible. It's got the jointed mouth thing like a predator. And then all kinds of little tiny buggy little aliens. We got a bunch of these creepy little things to go with the brood mother. And then four new characters, which again, I'm going to try to hold this up this way and hope it focuses on them a little bit. That's a significant number of more miniatures. Um, I'm wondering if you got people from every faction, because you got trench coat wearing guy here. That's a neat, oh, he's got like a peg leg or something. Come on, do it, do it. There we go. Cool. And then like hunched over little tech priest. And if you wanted like even even like Warhammer 40k, if you did Warhammer 40k role playing, these would be great things for that. Just cool sci-fi man. And while well, the the bad guy who's turned into a good guy, his arm's been replaced by a saw. Okay then. All right, badass looking. Same deal. Definitely over the top. Cool miniatures. So we got a ton of new miniatures in this set. Uh, this, I think, again, is a Kickstarter exclusive. We got a bunch of new characters, four new characters, whole new type of monster, the brood mother and the little tiny babies, and then some other big-ass abomination thing, all in the soldiers extra. So we're going to throw this back in here, and we're going to throw these underneath Two boxes to go. All right. The dark side extras. So we already had the dark side. Now we have extras for the dark side. Oh, wow. All right. We have orange people. It's a comic book? Looks like there's a comic book. No, just the rules. So there's a whole other scenario here or something. So it says Operation Persephone. Yep, a whole nother set of 10 more missions. So we are now up to 30 missions. 10, 20, no, 40 missions. You got a lot of missions here, Mike. 40 missions, um, same deal. This is obviously not a standalone. There's some new bad guys. There's um, some new scientists, companions, and then a bunch of missions. So four pages of additional rules and 10 more missions. Dark side has cookies. And of course the spawns for the new monsters, of which here we're gonna try to do this again. And then the scientist companions. I don't know what the rules are for companions, but here we have Hey, and thank you for focusing on most of that. A ton more of the red, nasty looking alien guys. Including these neat scientists. So I think these match the minis. Like that looks like the same guy I called salad fingers before and these look like the same brute looking guys but maybe not maybe they're new types there's at least one new type but it's definitely more of these these are again definitely the same so it's a big arm out but these new scientists are cool so if you want to play the the soldiers you can have scientists at companions yeah orange webcam's not gonna like orange or is it it's got a very buck roger looking guy here not really working okay we'll hold up one more scientist lab coat scientist with a gun yeah lab coats are fun to paint best i can say there so more salad fingers looking guys so some new poses it looks like for these and at least one new alien type because this is the same guy screaming that's the same he's in the same pose And another big hulking guy. Cool. That's that's a lot of new guys in here. So there we go. We'll show that off again. So this is the uh, what was it Dark Side expansion? Dark Side extras. So this is as big as the core box again. 
I think we have two layers of minis here. So this is the civilian extras. Wow. Yeah. Because you didn't have enough characters yet. My God. That's insane. Those are all new characters. Wow. That is insane. So we have all new monster types in here. Nothing like nothing we've seen before. These are all completely new. Um, yeah, we got sentry guns. We got new equipment cards. So we have all the cards for all the new monsters. We have a ridiculous number of characters. You know what? I'm going to get to the bottom first again. We're going to dig to the bottom. Dig to the bottom. Dig into the bottom. To get out this. So what do we have? So in the bottom is the where to put everything back. So here's a list of all the minis you're getting here in this box. All the gray ones are characters. That's insane. And all new monsters in a different color. It's a whole new type of monster. It's like a guy in a chair. Look at that over there. I'm sure we'll see the miniature eventually, but you can probably see these better than the actual minis when I hold them up to the camera. So I'm going to hold this up for a bit. Whole bunch of new characters and new monsters down at the bottom. And then whole new Xeno type. Including, it looks like flying creatures. Nuts. That's a lot. So then we have our summary sheet. Civilian rules has a new abomination, including a rogue bot. Uh, two new things. There's the mother-in-law abomination, the widowmaker abomination. So all a bunch of new abominations and new xenos. So obviously requires the base game. All right. So I am going to try. To just show this off this way. Like, look at all those. It's crazy. Number of miniatures in there. Including, like, a rogue robot. And this doesn't have tape, so... How well do you think this is going to go? Here, hopefully you can see some of those. Look at all those damn miniatures. Oh, one guy's sledding. We're going to stop. All these gray ones are new characters. It's crazy. I really dig this rogue robot. I like him. Oh my god, it's it's the there's the turret from Portal. Seriously. It's the turret from Portal. I'm sure other ones of these are probably familiar. I don't even know. Like look at this guy with the like backpack, you got like a Doc Ock thing going on here. Or there is a talk about um encouraging differently abled people you have a person in a wheelchair or you have Stephen Hawking because he does have a tablet to type with I don't even know there are so many neat looking minis here there's a uh, satyr or something I don't know <laughs> wow like just crazy crazy number there's a gray alien like this is nuts nuts all right we are going to put this away we're going to put this back in and then we are going to get all of the xenos look at them all look at all of the xenos this crazy amount of new mini whoa Look at all of those. All right, this is not working. But I'm going to try to hold some of these up so you can see them. So many minis. This is insane. You got to wonder if some, what someone would charge to paint a full set of these. All right, so you got to see these. So this is another creepy crawly. This really looks like um from Star Wars. There was a creature that looked like this. Look at that thing. It's crazy, creepy, evil Star Wars inspired bad guy. And then this guy. Looks like something out of Halo. Really nice looking minis. Impressive, most impressive. And then there are a ton of these really gross looking bugs. 
things that shoot stuff out of their bums, it looks like. Creepy. Creepy. So that's it. There is a ton of new monsters and new stuff in here. We got all new item cards. We got ton. Look at that. That many new characters. That's insane. That many new characters. There's a ridiculous number of new characters there. I don't even know how many there are. I'm not going to open this and show you them all, but there are a ton of new characters in here. That is the most impressive box so far. So that's the civilian box. And that is the last box in the Zombicide Invader. Zombicide Invader from Cool Mini or not. We have so much stuff here it's spread around the room here. I got to thank my friend Mike Murphy for just letting me check this out. Uh, I'm, I got to say, I'm kind of impressed. I'm kind of jealous. It's, I, it's a lot of stuff. All of that came in that box. That is nuts. That is a crazy amount of stuff that came in the Zombicide Invader box. Um, this is the base game. Zombicide Invader. Then you've got Black Ops, which is an expansion. Whole new team, whole new set of characters, whole new set of monsters. Basically doubles the contents in the base box. And then you have Zombicide Dark Side, which is a standalone game. Just as much stuff as is in the core box. Then you have the map tiles, which gives you another duplicate set of tiles. Then you've got the Orphans Gang and the Plague Gang. And then we've got the Kabuki Gang. And then there's Soldier Extras. And then um, Dark Side Extras. And then we've got the over here civilian 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 extras. Look at that. It's insane. There's so much stuff. There's a crazy amount of stuff. There's just too much. Alright. So again, thanks, Mike Murphy, for letting me unbox this. Uh he backed this at the soldier level on Kickstarter, which got him all the minis. There's a ridiculous amount of minis. I'm sorry, this is insane. Crazy amount of minis. Um, more than I would ever want to paint or be interested in trying to paint, even keeping track of them. I wouldn't want to clean up knowing which box everything goes in. That would be a bit nuts. Um, crazy amount of stuff. Uh, typical cool mini or not went absolutely nuts with the amount of stuff that came in this. So that has been my rather long unboxing of Zombicide Invader. Uh, be sure you check the uh, show notes because there's timestamps. You can jump to the important part. I probably should have said that at the top of the episode. Uh, so, so far, so good. That's it. That was heavy box. That's a lot of stuff. Thank you again, Mike, for letting me check that out. Uh, I am Mo Tuzno, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge. Normally answering your gaming and game night questions and striving to make everyone's gaming experience better. Let me put my years of game playing, event organizing, and game night hosting to use for you. You can send your gaming and game night related questions to questions at tabletopbellhop.com. And then... If you want to see answers to other people's gaming questions, head over to the website at tabletopbellhop.com and you can see where I've answered those questions. You'll also see news, reviews, and other articles. You can also check us out on YouTube, uh, youtube.com forward slash tabletopbellhop and catch us streaming live on twitch.tv slash tabletopbellhop. We also have a podcast, the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast, which we record on Wednesday nights on Twitch, twitch.tv slash tabletopbellhop. And you can find that on your podcatchers as well as on YouTube. Before you leave, make sure you hit subscribe or follow. And if you have a minute and you enjoyed what you saw today, it'd be awesome if you headed over to patreon.com slash tabletop bellhop and considered taping the bellhop. Thank you very much for Tabletop Bellhop. I'm Mo. Good night and game on.